Zach as well. Nothing too crazy coming out quite yet. So standard uh, in North America, banning LeBlanc on blue side is very normal because you don't want to let the red side team pick LeBlanc and then ban something maybe like a Cassidy later. And then there's mm -hmm. a no counter picks and how do you stop the LeBlanc snowball? So we see that almost all the time. I think Fnatic are very happy to see that because they, they haven't actually used LeBlanc a lot lately. And they're like, oh, thanks. We don't have to worry about it now. We Better safe than sorry, I guess, for TSM. Uh, they're also going to take that Blitzcrank off, which has been super high priority for European teams. And uh, talking to a lot of the NA teams over here in, in scrimming with these guys, they've they've kind of been, you know, swung over to that side and, and mm -hmm. started to see the light as far as Blitzcrank is concerned. So going to respect Europe there. So Elise is available. So is Thresh uh, as potential first picks that we normally see. Uh, there we go, uh, Svenskaren. Did complain on Twitter that he never got to play Lee Sin anymore. Not because of bans, but his coach is just like, no, you should play Lee. It's uh, it's even better. Just snowball the early game and don't worry about it. And it makes a lot of sense. We heard the desk talk about how important speed in the early game could be for TSM. Keeping up with Fnatic and Fnatic clearly ready to fight. They've already got their hands on that cannon as well as that Thresh. And now Syndra is also one of those picks we have to look at because if TSM does not pick it, in this rotation, Caps could lock it in and just, you know, you, you ban out whatever matchups you don't want to deal with. I think a Galio then is actually a smart answer if that was locked in, but we do get the Cinder from TSM, so they say, you know, we don't want to deal with Galio mid right now. I pick that against it, we just take Cinder. Yeah, I was going to say, honestly, after yesterday, I was like, okay, teams are probably not going to give Bjergsen Cinder anymore or, you know, let him even have that opportunity. He has such a long history with the champion. He's so good at landing so many different stuns, long range, you know, pass through multiple people, but TSM going to jump on that one. As you said, uh, it's dangerous to go with a pick like that over to the red side where you kind of protect with your next phase of bans. Now with this uh, potential monster unleashed from Caps, mm. there's one pick I really want to see him play against that he actually used to take against Syndra, which is Aurelian Soul, uh, something obviously certain North American teams are still finding success with. He's not shown it lately, so I'm not too confident in it, but I, I really think it is a pick that actually suits Fnatic extremely well, and that traditionally has worked well against TSM. TSM have already taken away the Corky. Tristana and Renekton are going to be bans on the side of Fnatic. One more ban to come in for TSM before Fnatic get the chance to lock in their options. Of course, Gallo is still on the table. Jesus, when we talked to him yesterday, it's a, it's a pick that Fnatic weren't prepared for, that they struggled against in that mid-game. Could not be as aggressive with that defensive option, but Aurelian Soul up, available to Leah, the one going to be banned away. I love the bans from TSM here. I think those are the two picks. Uh, a lot of mid laners are fine taking into Syndra. Uh, just removing them means like Oriana might be one of the choices you're looking at, even though it can be a difficult matchup to play. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, the Anivia comes out. Farm it up, boys. I'd rather see Aurelian Soul, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. There comes a time in every EU mid laner's life when he has to bring out the bird. So it is a very different play style uh, from the Aurelian Soul, and it's so much more about it's like AOE. The opposite. Exactly, it's AOE, it's zone control, it's team fighting. Uh, it's a, it's actually one of the slowest champions in the game yep. compared to one of the fastest champions in the game. Um, but so it is going to be that kind of farm uh, and safety and numbers type of thing here. TSM though, not wasting any time, locking in that Ash for the guaranteed engage. Now taking their time with the final pick. What are they going to put into that top lane? What are the options that are remaining? Well, Biofrost, he's playing with our hearts, but we'll see what they want to opt to go for. Ash already locked in for double. Most likely Clet. Yeah, going to be the safe choice for them now. In terms of picks against Clet, like there's not a lot of things that just completely destroys him in the laning phase. Like one of those picks that I hear about from like solo queues, like Jace top lane, you can pick against it, but like almost no one actually uses Jace at the moment. Yeah, it is an interesting thing to me because I do have, I start to get a little bit worried whenever I see an Anivia Thresh uh, team because as a purely you know melee champion player, those are two of the most annoying ones. And Kled is this we've seen, you know, guaranteed engage, you charge in. However, he can get walled off from the rest of the team, you know, if they're split up, if they don't take it all the way in. And there are a little bit of nuances now that DSM are gonna have to work around when they get towards that state of the game. And if Gragas here locked in as the last pick for Fnatic does add even more displacement uh, to those fights, it is going to make positioning very, very important. And while, of course, Anivia is a surprise and something new from Fnatic, everything else is so standard. Uh, it's always, always a tank top from Source with when Gragas, Galio, or Sheno are available. He's going for Gragas in this one. Kennen, of course, for Reckless. So it is the 1-3-1 the setup we see so often with just Anivia as the wave clear mid. 
Reckless in one side lane, Source in the other one. Also, to touch on the point that Doublelift was bringing up about throwing a curveball at TSM yeah. and him usually collapsing, uh, Bjergsen now comes from North America where he's been training against his fellow North American mid laner, Froggen, uh, who plays quite a bit of Anivia in solo queue still, even though he hasn't pulled it out in the LCS. Because uh, he doesn't feel the champion is quite strong right now, but he still, you know, does tend to play it in uh, solo queue every now and then. Yeah, and whenever you have Syndra, you don't really feel too bad about your matchup, almost no matter what you're facing. So Bjergsen is, is probably going to be fine in the mid lane. It's more the combination of roams and ganks with the Nivea wall against something like Cinder, because you can force a flash and then return ganker fairly easily if you get some help around you. Yeah, I don't feel like this curveball has quite enough spin on it, but we shall see. Will they be surprised or not? You're absolutely right, gentlemen. It is time to find out our third matchup of the day. And arguably the most anticipated. TSM, the pride of North America, Fnatic, the pride of Europe, going head to head. For the first time here in Rift Rivals since 2015. And Kennen gets his reckless. We'll say it that way. <laughs> we, we've made that one before. <laughs> Quite a few times. Uh, I didn't see. do it on purpose. <laughs> we never do it on purpose never, either. You don't have to admit that. <laughs> we just go just for it anyway. I'm jet lagged here still. <laughs> All right. Uh, honestly, ooh, are they going to oh, get a oh, pick oh, of oh. the tri bush? Reckless. Started off with some action. Oh, they're moving forward. Instant flash out from Reckless. Haunts her. Bear trap, rope. Yeah, the Yordle, but close enough. Yeah, Yordle, bear, pretty <laughs> same there. You know, very fearsome animals. <laughs> Both tiny. Okay, yeah. All right. So. Not that similar. However, Fnatic now making some more proactive moves. They spotted enough members of TSM to feel comfortable invading, laying down a bit of early vision, but definitely still a big disadvantage for Reckless and Jezus on the bottom side of the map. I might see Jezus actually also just place a ward near their own blue buff of Fnatic. Oh. If, they are, if they're stealing this one. Yeah, they're doing more than wards here. I would actually like this uh, Fnatic taking the opportunity uh, to get a little bit more out of it because Hauntzer... Oh, he's checking one brush. Oh, he's checking two brushes. Oh, he's checking two. Oh. But the only one he actually checked before. There's no brush here. He's just going to get hit from the sides. He's coming around the corner. That's the Flash Frost. Looking for a bit more he's damage. Dead. Is going to get the chance to dismount, but he's in the middle of the team. No good way to escape the Pocket Pistol. Ward placed over the wall. Hauntzer still has the Flash. One more Pocket Pistol. Hauntzer going to make it out. See, the proactive caster curse there. I protected him. <laughs> it's true. I see, I, see, I, see, I see the bias from you. Uh, let's see, we get Leash for, for Svenskeren right here, so he's off to a great start. Get the small Raptors, get his early red buff. Right now, Jesses can still ward that blue buff if they are afraid of uh, at least going in there, and at least they get some information on it. He actually decided not to do it, uh, but they are pinging that Svenskeren is on the bottom side. And we can see the differences between Fnatic and Rift Rivals versus their time in the ULCS. All about the early leads, but here at Rift Rivals, off to a deficit yet again. And let me go over something that is kind of beneficial for Kled, right? Uh, any other champion that gets chunked out to 25 HP has to back there. But he is almost able to remount. So he uses some of his regen and, and uses that courage bar to try and get back up on the horse, so to speak and uh, actually didn't have to go back to base, even though he did burn his flash. Everything is almost right with him, except he is down that potion, which he had to use to be able to get up to those minions and charge up again. And if you are so as like, the reason you pick a tank against Kled is because you feel like you have enough time in the game where you can get to like one full completed item, get a ninja tappy as well, and then actually use your TP to try and join your team and, and make a play happen before this Kled becomes a very annoying split pusher to deal with. Obviously though, uh, Hansa with his ulti can follow towards the mid lane at least fairly quickly, but it's all, all about the bottom lane fights if you are a fanatic. They have a lot of CC with Kennen once he's level six, Thresh, coming in with the Gragas as well. Like, all five champions on the side of Fnatic can offer some sort of either knockback or CC to set up a, a kill. Yeah, but until that level six point to Fischio, we're just gonna keep seeing this Ash, this Braum pressure in, punish the lack of flash on Reckless. They know he can't get aggressive. So for TSM, it is smooth sailing until those ultimates are available. Yeah, and we talked about this yesterday. Like, this is a very standard start for Fnatic's bottom lane. They are used to getting pushed on the tower and then wait for the team to be strong enough to actually come down and assist them. And then we get that big play where they tend to get a few kills into their own objective and they're right back in the game. So for now, with the Ash pick from TSM, they're able to control the lane. Svenskjern is down here as well. He will get spotted though. Hmm, I guess they didn't see him place that ward. It was just placed though by Fnatic. So maybe not quite enough attention to detail there from TSM because they do not uh, communicate uh, it. Can throw a Q in there. 
And they see Reckless approaching the wall. Should be aware of this, but Svenskaren still taking the time there. It is actually extremely annoying to interrupt mm -hmm. that recall for a jungler uh, at this stage. You want to get that buy-in while the camps are... He's trying again. <laughs> further away from Reckless. I think he's going to get this one off. Down another ward down as well. Jesse hits nope. the hook. Instant block coming in from Biofrost. Not afraid to use that unbreakable. Just to mitigate any potential aggression, any potential all-in from the Thresh and the Cannon, and Doublelift just happy to keep the pressure up. And I want to touch on some of the points the Analyst Desk made about, and even Doublelift made this, you know, in, in the feature we saw just before about, you know, Fnatic being unpredictable and the curveballs and everything. In a lot of ways, Fnatic have now really found this one playstyle that they use every game. So the, un the unpredictable style, in a sense, has, have, has become predictable because they always kind of play the same champions in top lane, in the AD carry role, even in the support role, and teams have noticed that. And as Broxa moves to the top side, the one new variable to Fischio here is Caps in the mid lane. No flash still from Hansa, remember. Kick on the Broxa, so as moving forward, the dismount comes out, they chain the CC flawlessly, and that's gonna be first blood coming in for Fnatic. This is a much better start for the team. Every now and then, we have seen Hanser kind of return to the mistake of pushing out a bit too far while he doesn't have his flash up. And uh, sometimes, even when you start to get close to it coming back up, you get a little bit more secure there, but pushes out past the mid lane. Uh, Broxa with a very nice route, jumps over the wall to make sure that he doesn't walk through any wards and easily slips in there for that first blood. And I can say for sure that every single top lane in Europe have experienced this exact gank from Broxa. Level three, level four, mm -hmm. he always loves to look top lane at least once or twice, see if he can get an early kill. Of course, with Hanzo not having the flash ready, it was a super easy pickup from him. And it happens so often for him. And the top lanes, you have to always talk about it. Like, yeah, playing Fnatic, okay, I'm ready for that early gank from Broxa. I, I don't want to die to it this time. And then they die anyway. And now and Hanzo joins them. I actually do feel for top laners because one of the most difficult things for top laners is controlling the wave in the early stages of the game around jungle ganks and around the flash cooldowns. And you can't always just be like, oh yeah, you know, your flash is not there. Uh, you have to back off now because the, the wave is, is pushing it so as and you don't have any previous vision. So, you know, the jungler could camp there, wait for you to teleport back. There, there are all these things, uh, you know, that come into top wave management because it is that longer lane and it's easier to punish. Uh, that you do have to count, and it really is a two-man thing, incorporating both junglers. Exactly, that's where normally you call up your jungler to help you push out if you don't have the flash ready, if you think you might die. I think Svenskaren was on top side and maybe on the way, but it was just a little bit too late. Now, Reckless lane swap with Jessis, sneaking his way in here. This brush is not warded. Hansa right now, flash is ready though. So as level six, if he gets the knockback, they might get a kill. TSM have not, uh, you know, called this yet because they don't have double of pushing on the bottom side. Body slam forward, cast, but just gonna joust right out on the side of Hanser. Skarl's still up. It's gonna be pretty easy to mitigate any kind of die, but Fnatic, they've got their eyes set on that tower. Yeah, it's a massive tempo advantage from Fnatic because they have that early recall going straight towards the top lane. You can see TSM's bottom lane is not at the tower yet. They're pushing in the wave as fast as possible, but they have four members of Fnatic pushing down, so this should be first tower for Fnatic based on this lane swap. What you're gonna, you know, give away with that lane swap, though, is, of course, the dragon control as well. TSM recognize that there's no way they catch up in this race, and Fnatic are definitely gonna get that first turret gold, so they're going for the Drake and the the turret at the same time, which means there is still some tempo advantage for Fnatic. And with Fnatic not having TP ready, they can't actually go down and try and, you know, send the Gragas to the bottom lane to try and wave clear. Reckless early recall, so they didn't go for a second tower top lane either. We're happy enough with the first tower kill and then also getting blue buff. TSM's bottom lane will get that tower and Reckless will pick up the farm. Well, it may just be a trade of blue buffs there after the towers and the dragon. The Ocean Drake going to TSM is pretty massive. Bjergsen just going to be able to continue to spam out all of those spells. Plus, as you can see, Doublelift is denying all these minions. Since they aren't rushing down the turret, he's going to have quite a few more minion waves to farm than Reckless. And usually you like to see for Fnatic when they have this pick is funnel lots of farm onto Reckless. Even though they did get the first turret bonus, a lot of CS here kind of makes it up. Yeah, again with Fnatic, not actually with the four members just pushing all the way down to TSM's tier 2 tower where Hansa was sitting and try and get some damage on that and maybe even kill it with that big tempo advantage. I think Regis was probably expecting TSM to rush the bottling tower and then the big wave would get pushed all the way to him and he would get some farm. But obviously he got denied and he had to respect the fact that TSM was in the jungle as well. And now he's sitting uh, pretty far behind in CS. Exactly. That's why during the trade, uh, we call out that TSM are taking their time, getting multiple objectives there and, and not really buying into this rushed game. Uh, and try and give over that extra money. So intelligent mi min uh, minion wave manipulation there. <laughs> Got it. Uh, is going to be able to earn them a little bit of gold back. Hans are going aggressive. 
Someone's just backing off for now, waiting for that Joust to cool down before he goes forward. Vicious Strikes comes in. That's going to be the charge going forward. Whoa. So has no options left to escape, but the cask keep Hanser at bay. He is unconcerned. Gonna try to dive the tower. Dismounts. The body slam goes forward. So has play. Walk away. That's the outplay. Man, Soas is doing this all the time, this split. We saw it on Javan as well yesterday. Like, outplaying these tower dives. People that get a little bit greedy when they play against Soas are like, ooh, is that a free kill right there? I'm gonna get it. And then, bam, the turn around. Yeah, Hanser not using oh, his flash in this one. that's in the mid lane. Oh, Bjergsen. Here it comes, he's taking his time, his sweet time. The Force of Will, the Chain CC, just gonna drop it down. He knows oh. there's an egg on the way. <gasps> Did he pull that damage, minion? The flash over, double flash is coming out from TSM, but that's the death. I wanna the see the replay to see if Bjergsen threw that minion in front of the cocoon. Anyways, they get the kill anyways uh, at the end of it, and they do have to blow two flashes to get it. Good arrow though from uh, double lift. is always one of those moments where if you don't actually flash the arrow itself, you're most likely gonna die. That's a kickback on Bjergsen, Soros is here. Ghost now coming out for Bjergsen. He's throwing down a little bit of damage. The Reckless is here as well. It's a party in the mid lane. One more Dark Sphere could do it. Bjergsen's not gonna get the chance. Just a quick smack on the ground and a death for Bjergsen. Quick answer here from Fnatic as they roll five members, uh, discounting Caps, of course, because he was dead. <laughs> to the mid lane. He was spirit. He was previously there as an egg. Uh, let's take another look at this dive from Hanser, though, because uh, as you said, you know, people get a little anxious when they're diving Soaz, and there are multiple things you have to worry about. Uh, the Curse of the Colossus shield, possibility of coming back up, it does there. And then Hanser goes in, gets dismounted, Soaz flashes, but, you know, the respect isn't quite there from Hanser to do the same. But that's the great thing about the outplay from Soaz, is just how patient he is with his summoner spells. And oh, cool man. And now Punish again. Not patient whatsoever. Just the leap forward, keeping it going with the Sonic Wave. Another kill for Broxa. That is a bit of a tilter. Hanser is going to need probably his teammates to help him out in, you know, not really continuing with this this type of exaggerated play. You know, sometimes when multiple things go against you with small margins, it really does kind of cloud your vision. Seeing in this game one of the reasons a lot of players in Europe are hyping up Broxa. This new and up-and-coming jungler. He's been doing so well in the early game, and almost every single game Fnatic has played in the EU LCS here in the summer split. And we see the same thing here. He's able to snowball Soas, then he joins in the fight in the mid lane, and he has enough champions he can play as well. You can't really ban him out, and it's it's been a great start from Broxa. And then we see Fnatic really trying to pick up the pace, you know, trade towers, go for some of these roams here and get get some kills. It's a really good point because he has been at the heart of Fnatic picking up that pace. He has been the one driving uh, the pace here for Fnatic. Getting that counter kill back onto Bjergsen in the mid lane as well. So, really affecting those solo lanes for themselves. And Fnatic scaling up pretty nicely here with a decent thousand gold lead. And across the board, things looking pretty good for the team. Gold lead, not massive yet, but happy to have it. Does balance out with the Ocean Drake to a certain degree. And now TSM, they're setting their sights on the mid lane, but Anivia. May not have been a powerhouse in the early game, and she may be in trouble again. Bjergsen leaping forward. Brox is going to try to do what he can, but no follow-up available. That's the pick for TSM. Suddenly, Brox is kicking it back to the team. Double lift getting knocked up. Jez is moving forward. It is an all-out bloodbath, but double lift strikes back. Suddenly, the cask is in. Reckless on the way forward as well. Flashing. That's the slicing mails from Fnatic are starting to tear TSM apart, and they have bit off more than they can chew because Fnatic are unrelenting. It's two for two in the end, though. We see the bottom line here from TSM. They survived. They're coming in here to try and defend the tower. Regis is leaving. He needs some farm in the bottom lane. And Fnatic and TSM trading very even. I really love this Ash pick here from Doublelift against the Anivia, because you know Anivia is going to sit there and try and wave clear. Yeah. Second arrow he hits onto Caps without the flash, obviously. Easy kill for TSM. But sadly for them, they don't have any minions, so they're actually tanking the tower this entire time. Yeah. Brosa goes in. He gets that kick onto Doublelift to force the engagement, but it really is so as from the side with this barrel that gets Bjergsen into place for the kill pickups here for Fnatic to make it that two versus, or two for two. And in the end, a fairly even trade. Think is coming up here, 22 seconds left on this Drake uh, for them to set up. And a lot of the vision right now is Fnatic favored at the moment around this bottom side, though they're the ones that traded their bottom turret. So that extra level of safety is not there. I want to take a look also at Doublex build. Like we see so many different Ash versions. There's Infinity Edge into the Double Seals. There's of course the Play the Rune King. He's going Essence Reaver in this one because his job is to fire as many arrows as possible to force and engage on a team that wants to play 1-3-1 one, one split push. So it's Doublex's job here to start the fights for TSM, often against Caps. Whenever Nivea is sitting in wave playing mid, if you arrow her and you actually kill her, wave play is gone. 
Fnatic's 1-3-1 split push breaks down. They didn't have to go to mid lane and defend. So double if is saying it's not about pure damage, it's about the arrows the ulti needs to land. And right now with the lead, the TSM trying to build for themselves, it will be good to get a few more arrows because Fnatic for now still in control of the game to a certain degree, but double Ocean Drakes are going to make it quite easy for TSM to keep up the pressure. Yeah, and in the face of all this crowd control, uh, we are seeing multiple Merc Treads being picked up by Fnatic, not only Caps in the mid lane who's been hit a bunch by these chain stuns, but as well, uh, Brokes are here on the Lee Sin because he's going to try and make those plays get into the back line. Here's another one. And it just connects again. This man cannot miss. Bjergsen throwing out the damage. It's going to be easy. Now going into the egg. Plenty of spheres on the ground, but Brox is on the way in. Bjergsen, can he close this one out? Force of will, not going to be enough. There was a few seconds left on Caps's flash. TSM knew that. That's why Doublet could fire the arrow. Now it is ready for the next one, but they forced out the passive once again. And what you see from TSM is that Syndra is holding mid to just match the wave clear off this is Nivea, and it's on double lift and fire to go bottom lane and push out the wave against Reckless and then roam mid lane every time because Reckless alone can't do anything against the two or three guys of TSM. So he has to concede the wave, sit far back, and that always allows double lift and fire first to go mid lane and force that engage on Caps to then try and get mid tower and really stop Fnatic from split pushing. Yeah, Caps playing that Nivea game of trying to soak up some of that pressure of the constant arrows and just have enough mana to keep on farming. He's not trying to fight anybody at the moment. Just trying defensive Anivia play here that you're quite used to in the early game. And I really think a Banshees could benefit him, but he has so many items he wants to get already. Yeah. Like, you need so much gold with your Rod of Ages build. Banshees obviously could stop that long-range arrow from happening, but sadly, once it get removed by just a single skill shot, doesn't really help you anymore. And we've seen, uh, you know, the effectiveness of Tenacity is definitely going to be there because the chain stuns from Bjergsen, from uh, Svenskaren, also an issue. All right, Rift Herald, will it be contested? TSM do have vision. Double lift arrow up and available. Now Soaz looking for the disengage, just trying to make sure his team can keep this one locked down, but in comes the charge. Soaz gonna beat the body block. Fnatic are starting to back off of there. Goes the arrow, and it's going to connect onto Soaz. The stun going in, looking for the disengage coming out from Genesis. Soaz going to drop. Meanwhile, Brox on the backside just has to flash out, and that Rift Herald eye he, cannot get picked up. Exactly, he killed it, so he doesn't have to pick it up. He denies it from TSM. It does stay there a long time, yeah. though, so. They have lantern. They might yeah, try to send someone in. It. Send someone in, throw the lantern. He can take it on the way he's out. He's low health, though. You got to oh. be worried about the stun. Yeah, he's backing out. TSM also staying around. The eye turned to watch Vince Karen walk by. Nobody's going to pick me up, really? Dude, no? Two okay. games in a row now. No one loves the Rift Hill. <laughs> this is like if Aladdin, if they just never brought the genie. Oh, they're the coming. Lamp. Oh. They got the lantern Come still. Come get me. Get the genie. Get the lamp. Oh! oh! Denied. So has even TP'd in. All right, look what else was going on, though, because Reckless was split pushing on bottom side the entire time, so they have the wave on bottom side up to the turret, and they're going to try and get pressure here in two lanes at the same time. TSM in base, losing multiple turrets. Yeah, all this Rift Hell stuff here actually meant that TSM suddenly were not sitting and playing with this Syndra versus Nivea and the Ash and Braum against the cannon. They actually moved all top lane. That means Fnatic now with the split push can get the bottom oh. tower and something mid lane. Ironic there. Don't need don't get the Rift Herald. Do get the turret anyway. And they actually might get multiple. Soaz gets stunned up though. TSM trying to fire back. Soaz just gonna get deleted. That's the kill over to double lift. But meanwhile, Fnatic just playing the map game. They get the towers, but they lose Soaz. Uh, no flash from me. Use TP before as well, trying to join in on that. Rift Hill will pick up the eye, kind of weird play, and then actually sits here, hides <laughs> in a brush. Ha! Found ya! Fnatic brush usually involves more people sitting in a brush. Fair. Not a, not a full tank. Ragas being like, oh, can't actually kill you guys. And five for five now on the arrows from Dove. That was an easy one, uh, but he gets to kill with it. Yeah, it counts. Flash out from Monster to get to safety. Meanwhile, double the pressuring in on the top side. Fnatic content to keep up the pressure on the bottom side. But still, never more than a 1k gold lead, it feels like, as TSM going to do their best to even it up. And we're approaching 20 minutes, and the team's just about dead even. We're going to get that same setup we've seen for the last five, six minutes of Reckless trying to sit in that one side lane, hoping that a single member shows up. Will probably never happen, because Biofrost will just follow double lifts around the map and make sure it's always TSM's dual lane getting the first push into then playing around caps. On oh, Sven is really in a dangerous spot. Moving forward, one auto going to connect. Guaranteed stun if Reckless flashes forward. He's going to do so. Now moving for a little bit more. Sven Skarin gonna get taken down. That's a pick for Fnatic. 
Half the team is in base, half the team is recalling. Sven is invading on the red buff. And Fnatic pick him off with just a teleport cooldown used from Caps. Definitely a good pickup there for Fnatic. And with an Infernal Drake on the way, TSM can't waste any more time. Luckily for TSM, the Infernal Drake is still 50 seconds away. Uh, 50 seconds away. So Svenskan will respawn, get back out on the map, ready to fight for it. But this is where you gotta be careful because a Nivea wall in these little choke points. That is just the game changer. And that's why we say you can't waste any more time because vision setup is so big in this stage of the game with the game you know, so close at the moment. Vision over to Fnatic because of this, they have Scuttle Crab speed boost as well as control wards. And obviously Fnatic wants to push out the bottom lane so they can actually walk straight up the river in towards this Drake here. Caps is taking care of mid lane. So the two lanes around the Drake also important when it comes to the setup. TSM though because of Syndra being so strong, gets the push mid, they can go into the river, kill the wards, and deny Caps from setting up that potential Anivia wall. And no TP available from the Gragas either, so Soaz already on the way down to the fight. He's ready for the full-on 5v5 if it's what TSM want to go for. All right, they're starting it up and bringing it down very quickly. Looks like they get the jump on this one. No chance. Interesting. Fnatic get the vision, but just give up the Drake. No, but it's, it's actually just such a good play from TSM. Uh, pushing mid out first, going into the river area, killing the wards away, knowing, okay, now there's no chance for Fnatic to catch us. And then instead of, like, baiting around this Drake, they just rush it down, because they know, okay, we can actually kill it before Fnatic moves. Great call. And they have to be a little bit careful at this stage in the game. Fnatic have you know, a pretty good five-man squad as far as being able to tank up most of these opportunities. So, you know, Elisa and the Syndra and the Ash, you know, have the opportunity to try and punish someone if they're out of position. But Fnatic aren't currently, you know, opening that possibility up to TSM. It's a decent defense there, though, for them to collapse on the turret. And we can see now Reckless swap to the top side, seeing as Baron is alive. Drake is already dead, so that is the objective Fnatic needs to play around. Always put the teleport on the opposite side. Reckless is your strong split pushing member that can get that push going and then you can actually start making a play around an objective. But for now, uh, Fnatic not really in a position to rush a 21-minute uh, Baron, weird enough, uh, and they have to just <laughs> give it a bit more time. Yeah, I definitely don't want to do that. Uh, they do have the Anivia, as we said, one of the slower-moving champions, and Caps is scaling up on this bird. You know, there's a reason why his game plan for the opening was just farm and, you know, protect at your turret and try and soak up pressure. He's, he's doing that quite well, 220 CS for himself, actually highest in the game, just barely. And to be fair, when Cap said he was gonna unleash the monster, I was kind of expecting like a, like a <laughs> tip, like, like some really aggressive, but okay, unleashing the monsters is farming. And for now, it looks to be exactly what Fnatic want to do later and later they get into this game, the stronger the individual will get. And as it's all about Baron setup, it seems like, both teams content just to keep pushing the waves and looking for that vision. And we still have to remember there is really no answer from Fnatic side against the arrow from double lift. Uh, there's no Banshees, there's no Mikhails, there's no QSS. So with no flash on someone like Reckless, he is a target. Caps might be forced to use early flash before the fight even starts. And again, we're really looking at double lift to set up the fight here. But first, we're looking bot lane. So as buying a little bit of time, trying to get the cast to knock two away, but can't quite get the positioning right. Now running for his life, Joust back through the vicious strikes to flash over the wall. Going up, coming down, Broxa on the way in, the kick back, Ooh. looking for the turn, Broxa! Damn, boy. Slammed against the wall there. Roxa slips in and saves the day for Soaz. Hanser does not follow the chase. Split decision here. Svenskaren the only one who goes over and he goes down. See the fight again. So Soaz already calling now that he's gonna get ganked. You see Broxa is on the way from the mid lane. Hanser and Svenskaren onto him. Soaz doesn't really manage to knock them away with his ulti, but he does get close to the wall. And while all this is actually happening, Caps did lose his flash because he tried to come as well, but now Broxa joins, kicks him back, destroys yeah. Sven Skarin. They were uh, not on the same page here. Hanser did not want to continue. Sven did. A flash there from Caps, as he said, was blown. Bro uh, Balfrost, though, gets hooked. Unbreakable, gonna buy him a bit of time, but may not be enough. Caps stunned up on the side. He has no flash, but no chance for Biofrost to make it out of this one. Caps popping the Banshee's Veil. Fnatic looking for another engage. Broxa running forward. The kick gonna land now. He does not have the option to kick him back quite yet. In a few more seconds, could have been death for TSM, but they're not going to lose anything. We have to ban TSM from entering that jungle because this is the second time they have guys walking into it with multiple members not even being nearby. But remember what I was talking about during Champion Select, the jungle and support proximity. First time it was just Sven, second time it was just Biofrost. Put one and one together. 
And who do they get collapsed on by? Jezus and Broxa in that play, Kobe. Starts to fall apart a little bit for TSM, but they can pull it back together. Not a massive deficit. Nothing really lost from those two picks, but Fnatic could lose something in exchange. Caps doing what he can with the Archangel Shield may not be enough, because Hauntzer comes over the wall. The TP. Oh, it's TP. <laughs> the egg Just teleport. to save the egg. Broxa running for his life. Hauntzer going to get knocked back, but Bjergsen knocked to safety. Fnatic holding onto the tower, but losing so much. Ends up being a one for one, and Reckless was just pushing the top side. He's on his way down now to see if he can help defend the turret. Or he's just taking red buff. I guess that's also fine, because Caps with the wave limit is going to be able to hold it. We're just constantly looking at TSM, trying to actually group up, force a play onto either Caps or Jesses, get the kill, try and get that meta is still alive, this standing is, there. This is one of the most difficult compositions to force things on. Thresh is very good counter engage, Anivia is very good when being engaged upon, and Gragas ultimate you know, always throws that extra wrench in the plan. TSM though, they do get uh, the kill with the flash there and the egg cooldown and the teleport. So even though it's a one for one, there are a couple more cooldowns you have to think about. The only good thing though for TSM is whenever you see Kennen in the side lane, you know he can't join very quickly. There's obviously no sort of global for, from Reckless side. And that always gives you that 4v5 advantage for at least some seconds to force that fight. But you see QSS from Jesses, QSS from Reckless as well. Like we, it's only Caps was really a target uh, for TSM at this point. You can understand why 0-2-2 has been the focus of so many different arrows coming in from double lift, so many different small pressure ganks in the mid lane. TSM uh -oh. with a clear goal here in the early game, and now they want to get the fight started. That is the ultimate reckless coming to the backside, dishing out what damage he can onto Hauntzer, but double lift the rest of TSM are just free to hit onto Soaz. Hauntzer's going to have to dismount. Jezus is running for his life, but that's the killing spree for double lift, and TSM just find the two picks. Fnatic just not in a position to fight. No flash, no passive from the Anivia. You see how Fnatic instantly has the engage happen. He needs to try and back away, but Hauntzer with this Kled here, diving straight onto Caps, making sure he's kept busy, and finally TSM, they are grouped as five to get an engage to get the mid tower and they're still looking more than fine in this game and they're about to get their second infernal drake this will be the fourth drake of the game here for tsm completely controlling the neutral objective here after that charge and as you said to Fischio, the ash arrow and the kled is basically a guaranteed engage this one they did well request he wasn't in a side lane but he was on the up uh, side of this little ramp here and not quite with the team. Hanser got out a large amount of damage and pressure onto Caps, so the defense wasn't really set up for Fnatic. And we have to always remember the teams are not really afraid of Kennen in a team fight situation. So if he's with the team, they're like, great, you're not annoying us in a side lane, that's fine. We can still take that fight because they have an Ash on their side, a much stronger team fighting AD carry. So if you are TSM, the fact that you find a grouped up Fnatic without summoners ready is perfect to set up this engage here. Four drakes for them as well. And I think what the North American teams have showed this tournament is just packing extra engage against some of these split pushing comms from the European teams, some of these scaling comms from the European teams have been extremely impactful because they've always been able to find engages. Double has still hit every single arrow. He's not hit anything. Oh, he hasn't missed anything. <laughs> and the aggressive use of arrow between lanes has been so effective for TSM in the early game, now coming in clutch in those team fights. And Bjergsen and Double have just completely untouched in that last skirmish. And if you can't shut down the Ash and the Syndra, it's going to be so difficult to force these fights out, especially with that AD Kennen. But once again, no major advantages. Both teams gonna look for the pick. TSM definitely in the lead with those four Drakes. We still haven't been able Here to take Here we go again. Kled coming over the wall. The TP now coming in for Fnatic. Looks like it is going to complete. Soaz actually going to cancel it in the end. Bjergsen looking for the pick. Is not going to find this guy. The flash forward for Biofrost. He's getting aggressive, and that means Jesus is set to fall. Another pick for TSM. They make it look so easy here with the hard engage from the side. They oh, caught another one. Soaz, not where you wanted to be. Death brushed as a Fnatic member. Not a lot to say at this point. You hear it in the crowd. The TSM chance coming in strong. Oh. Fnatic just doing what they can. Bjergsen locked in a bit of a cage there, but Cap's now the one in trouble. Double is going to dish out the damage. Archangel Shield, will it be enough? Double if not going to risk the flash into the cannon. And TSM not concerned about the Baron quite yet. Maybe a bit too low on the health bars. Well, they can well. keep engaging. They don't actually have to, like, take make any risk because they're going for it with five members. They have enough HP on the carries they feel like. Bjergsen is fairly low, but they also have two Ocean Drakes. Yeah, they do have to worry about the steal here as uh, Broxa trying to get some vision with his Q. 2k health. 
starting to drop. Is TSM going to burst it down? Stun goes over the wall. Broxa leaps into the pit. Can he get it? No! Sven going to secure it in the end. Broxa given no escape and caps. So low on the opposite side of the wall. That's the Baron for TSM. And again, we're seeing the engage being used well. We're seeing very good calls from TSM. They're not just sitting back and allowing Fnatic to set up that reckless split push. And again, that's kind of the big thing for TSM against this composition is because as soon as you get the team fights, Fnatic's comp is very limited in what it actually can do. It really thrives on like splitting up the map and then finding one or two guys being caught out by a wall from an Eva, a hook from GSS. When that doesn't happen, TSM are winning the fights. TSM staying proactive is winning them the game. TSM splitting up, going one by one into the jungle uh, as a team, that is where Fnatic are going to prey on. That's where you know they were getting a, a foothold into this one. But TSM recently, back to the five on five, just group up, arrow, Kled ultimate, there's a guaranteed engage. And you said were, and that's the operative word there, because TSM not making those mistakes anymore, grouping up, using this Baron buff, looking to push, looking to extend this lead, 5k in their favor, and it's only going to get bigger, and Fnatic quickly running out of options here in this matchup. Well, for now, you are, if you are Fnatic, you're trying to again find that one guy who's left alone, but with a Baron buff on TSM, they have no reason to have any guys just being randomly left alone. They can just group as a team with the buffed up minions and start pushing all the way down. Arrow is available from double lift, but uh, they're just gonna get a, a free tower. Charge in the mid lane on to Reckless. Lantern is available, so we'll take him to safety. Broxa eager to leap in for a little bit more, but that means they're gonna lose the inhibitor on the top side. Only Soaz and Caps there to defend. Jezus throws the hook forward, not gonna connect. Soaz desperate to get something back, throws it in on the bio. Oh, Fox, he missed the one. first missed arrow. Both teams just gonna back off here. Jez is so hungry to get the fight. We have had some very one-sided mid games for uh, you know the thir first three matches. TSM 30 minutes in, already inside the Fnatic base. One inhibitor down is defensible, but it doesn't look like Fnatic are adapting here, changing the game plan. Now they're going after Bjergsen, but he pops his ghost. Brooks is behind him. Flash uh, out. They got both summoners. Okay, forward kick back into the team. The flay backwards as well, but the Anivia could be the one in trouble. Bjergsen buying so much time. The Sonic Wave going to get interrupted by oh, Biofrost. Ash on the backside. Bjergsen finally going to drop a Fnatic. They started this fight on the back foot, and that may just be how it's going to end because they're getting taken down. Biofrost not even going to get the save, but Bjergsen finally drops, and it just doesn't mean a thing. He stayed alive for so long. Right now, Regnus is sitting top lane, so GSM going for more. Flash forward defense, Garen. He's going to leap right over the wall with the Venomous biting. He's just going to finish it down. TSM double if now godlike as they're going to look to push this one in. Yeah, they still have Baron buff. They could push this one all the way into another inhibitor here for TSM. And it's eerily similar to the last one. Now uh, they're going to have intense pressure. Fifth Drake coming up will also be there as if they even have to wait around. They're going Drake, to end the Nexus, game. What do you want? <laughs> Nexus, I'll take it. Pushing in, looking for a little bit more. Broxa doing what he can to hold on. But every analyst predicted Fnatic to be at the top. EU to be at the top of this tournament. But TSM, they have decided differently. They are cleaning up Fnatic. They are making this one look easy. And they are the hope for NA. In a few seconds, they end the game. Nice right. cliffhanger, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, will they do it? We tried. Uh, oh, there you go. TSM, TSM <laughs> undefeated here at Rift Rivals. They finish up at 3-0 and zero now. Yeah, and that was not an easy game for them to play because early on there were a lot of kills happening. You know, Fnatic were finding success around the map, but then we saw this composition where they draft the Ash after seeing Anivia. They're like, we need some sort of hard engage. We know Caps is going to sit mid lane. Arrow after arrow was fired by double lift. It's getting control mid for Bjergsen with Syndra. And I think what we're just seeing from multiple games now is the amount of engaged tools from the North American teams are just catching their, their European teams so often. Here's the thing, because Fnatic have Gragas, they have Lee Sin, they have Thresh. These are also engaged tools, yeah. just not staying proactive and not really you know, drafting to that style of play either. Exactly, because that's the problem for Fnatic is if they are the ones engaging as five with those tools, well, then you have your Kennen, who is a split pushing pick that doesn't fit in the hard engage team fight style that TSM are playing around with with their composition. So we did, we're seeing from all the European teams a lot of limitations in how they're drafting and playing. So as soon as a team is bringing something a little bit different, again, in this case, like strong engage, 
those comps just kind of fall apart because you can't really play 1-3-1 one, one split push against Ash engages. Yeah, not if they're going to put the pressure on constantly. You never have the chance to leave the mid lane when they're trying to force plays each and every opportunity they get. And we just have to praise TSM. This is such a solid game coming out from them against kind of the signature style of Fnatic, still shutting it down in the end. Well, TSM, they stay undefeated here at Rift Rivals, the win over Fnatic. Let's leave it to the analysts to break that one down further. Thank you very much, Dracos. Uh, indeed, well, Fnatic not strong enough for TSM, absolutely pulling the trigger. And there's a lot to talk about. TSM did really well, but I do want to highlight an EU player because early on, Fnatic's top laner, he pulled out some of his signature escapes. Let's take another look. Brought to you by Acer. Uh, I just wanted to highlight it once again because it is quite impressive how Soaz keeps doing this, and especially the mental effect I can only imagine he has on his counterpart. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is why Hunter calls uh, to kill him bot lane later was because he <laughs> dies now and it like really wants to get the revenge kill on Soaz, but then again, that play he also gets like turned around. He looks like he has around. so much health. Yeah, well, Soaz always looks like he's overextended, but he does it so often. He's gotten really good at towing the line between baiting someone to dive him and not dying. And he did that a lot this game, uh, but this is also like, <laughs> he's good at not dying, but what is the rest of Fnatic yeah, exactly. doing while this is happening? Because normally if two people are going all in for Soaz right here, like you're pushing a wave somewhere, but TSM actually had really good wave management to prevent this from being bad. Something should happen, and we had our eyes a whole game almost on Reckless and where he was and what Fnatic was doing in reaction to some of these things. And before we talk about this some more, I do owe you an apology, probably. Yes. The graphic that we showed earlier was inverse, so this is actually the correct stats for <sighs> Reckless and Deadlift, so I I cut you off and said that they weren't good in laning, but obviously Doublelift is a god, so I take it all back. Um, but then, to turn this on to this game, Reckless did get his favorite pick, which is Kennen. And Trashy, you were talking about the fact that he's always in the sideline, and he kind of makes you question as a player if you're doing the right thing. Mm, for sure. I mean, this game, um, he didn't really have a lot of impact because he did he couldn't really do anything on sidelines because TSM didn't really challenge him in the mm -hmm. side lanes. Um, and instead, they had the these tools like S Arrow in mid lane to just force hard and make sure that they could just force the fights and always be proactive. And when you hit every arrow, then it's going to look really It's not nice. on the graph, but he did hit almost every yeah. arrow. Every arrow, but one. But one, yeah. What that didn't matter uh, in the end. Double have played absolutely awesome this game. And uh, even though it was pretty close, as Reckless was doing the side lane game, TSM never really seemed to play into it, right? Yeah. When I watch a lot of the other Fnatic games from the EU LCS, either Fnatic is doing a five-man engage somewhere or people are kind of like walking into their strengths, whereas TSM actually played around Fnatic's weaknesses really well. They, they never played into the play style, secure Drake's, let Reckless split push, let him get two hits on a turret and then walk away, and then initiated again and again and again. Do you also think that the Anivia pick because uh, of caps, like obviously if you are being pushed into taking a fight or whatever. Yeah, he's kind of defensive champion and he's very yeah. good at wave clear, but would you not rather have something in his hands that can make something happen in a fight like that? I mean, I think Anivia doesn't fit the meta too well, but I but, guess if, yeah, if you want to play this really annoying like AD carry side lane uh, all game, I guess Anivia wave makes sense because it is a really yeah. big uh, blocker. Yeah, it's weird. It prevents the mid lane from getting pushed in, right? Like yeah. he, he got hit by almost every yeah. Ash arrow in the mid lane. He popped his egg on cooldown, mm -hmm. and they didn't lose the mid turret until 22 minutes into the game, and they technically bought a lot of time for that. But as Trashy said in the pregame, when Fnatic's strategy is working, they actually have pressure in the mid lane, mm -hmm. and they cascade that down to Reckless. But when they don't have that because TSM got Cinder and they controlled the mid lane, Fnatic didn't have and to play. The, the problem I see is I don't know if the Nivea pick is, is forced because of the Cannon pick, but I just don't like it because... Usually, I want to see Caps being a playmaker and forcing stuff in the early early and mid game. Uh, we have seen a lot of Talia play from him, where he can like dominate the map with his, with his rooms and stuff. But he uh, with Anivia, you're just stuck under the tower, and with the Ash arrows, they were just completely dominating the mid lane, and they could use the the pressure they got from mid into. Yeah, and TSM levels. waited it, and then. When they did get the mid tower, they pulled the trigger and they just engaged up on Fnatic time and time again. We have a couple of replays to show that problem. But yeah, I think, I don't know, it is, I think, really hard to play any mid, even though I don't agree with the Anivia, because all these arrows hit throughout the early game, and whatever you play, it's gonna die if you get hit by the arrows like that. To people watching, it might be useful to pick uh, someone who spelled cleanse against Oh yeah, that's a It might one. help a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the teleport, not as effective as the cleanse at escaping Ash Arrows. And this is also one thing that I think the European teams are learning very quickly now that Bjergsen's had two games on Syndra. TSM is ridiculously good with Syndra, not just in, you know, getting a kill in the mid lane at 10 minutes, but in controlling the late game. They're willing to CC chain and burst out the front line pretty much no matter what it is. And then they're also very good at playing back towards the Syndra. So you're never mm. really getting on him and the team plays around it very well. Like, that's... From, from it's not something I think he's going to get again. Yeah, from yesterday's games, we saw a lot of times when they were sieging, he was putting up uh, two balls uh, next to each other and then mm -hmm. making double stuns, and then they just follow up with CC. And I think they coordinate really well whenever Bjergsen and uh, Double Lift is playing together in, in the mid when they're sieging mid uh, about setting up CC and stuff like that. Well, this. TSM overall looking strong here, and another victory for them as they beat Fnatic. Let's hear from their jungler about that game. Thank you very much, Shucks. Yes, I'm joined by Sven Scare and I have the pleasure of interviewing you back on European soil after a long hiatus. Let's talk about this game uh, first and foremost. It looked shaky at the beginning, felt like Fnatic had a lead, but then all of a sudden TSM took control in the mid game. How and why did you manage to do that? Uh, yeah, so the European teams have a pretty good early game, I would say. They play a lot for kills and just the early game is pretty strong, so we just had to like kind of uh, slow down the game and we play around a bot lane, which has a lot of pressure, like the, the AD carry is like playing a lot of troll stuff. So we, ha we can have pressure all, all the time on bot lane. So we just got all the dragons for free. And yeah, Peter just carried the game with the, the air arrows. Yeah, best marksman NA. Definitely felt that way. But best sniper NA, a couple of tweets I saw those coming through. Um, you've played against a lot of different forms of Fnatic uh, back when you were playing on the EU LCS stage. And of course, now coming back here, the crowd was supporting TSM, very loud chance. What's it like coming back to EU under an NA flag and beating the old kings of Europe? Uh, yeah, so in all my old teams, it was always that Fnatic was the team to beat in Europe, and I never really managed to be able to beat them. Like, they're always the strongest team in Europe, but now being a part of TSM, it's like I'm on a, a different level, kind of, a different team. So, yeah, we actually have a chance against all the other good teams. So, yeah, it feels good about the, beating the best EU team. Uh, two more questions. Let's talk a little bit about the expectations for North America coming into Rift Rivals. There was so much hype around EU teams and NA is going to get crushed and NA doesn't stand a chance. Why do you think that perception existed before the tournament? I uh, actually don't know. It's just the Europeans love to talk a lot of shit, I guess, because <laughs> I, I don't know about the other NA teams, but I know our, our performance against the European teams, even at Worlds and at the MSI was... Like, we had a positive uh, win rate or whatever against the EU team, so I don't know, understand why they think they're better, but yeah, I don't know. Well, it definitely turns out to be the case. I hear your family are actually in the audience today. Is, is that true? So happy to see the win? Yeah, I hope they're happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. One last question. Let's talk about the EU teams. Dude, why do they suck so much? Uh, I mean, I'm European, so I don't really want to talk too much trash, but yeah, I just feel like... They don't play that well around vision and they just do a lot of random stuff like uh, the map control. So NA teams put a lot of effort into playing the game like kind of perfectly and not not going into river alone and stuff like this. So yeah, I guess that's like the small stuff they don't do. Well, Spence Gary, thank you so much. Congratulations on the win. Congratulations on 3-0 here at Rift Rivals. We're going to head to an ad break. When we come back, Rift Rivals continues.